Welcome to Mike Brown Barbecue. Today we're going to make Texas hot gut style sausage on this 250 gallon offset smoker. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so we're making a Texas style hot gut sausage today. I've already cut up my meat. I've already got my seasoning mixed up. All the uh, ingredients and the poundage, grams and all that will be down in, in the description. But what I got here is 11 pounds of brisket trim with 10 pounds of pork butt. HEB had pork butts on sale for 97 cents a pound. I've been saving my brisket trim for that. When they put the pork butts on sale, I go ahead and I grab pork butts. I already pre-cut my brisket trimmings up when I'm doing my brisket trim. Ooh, I need to 10 ratio of meat to fat. That way when I buy a pork butt, a pork butt's naturally already about 70, 30, 80, 20, so I don't have to do no intense figuring out but if you did want to get it down to an exact measurement you can just buy you can cut all the fat off your brisket use pork loin and then get pork back fat but that's too much trouble for all that so what we're gonna do go in with our seasoning mix like I said this will be down in the uh, description we're gonna pour it right over the top of it and what I like to do is add half of my water up front to help hydrate these spices. Now, I have good well water, but if you don't have good water, use a good bottle water for your liquid. But disclaimer, taste your water first to make sure it don't taste dirty. I've had friends that used a water hose or had bad water and mixed it in their sausage, then you got that dirty water taste in your sausage. Pro tip, Use nice, clean water. So with that being said, let's get our hands dirty. We want to spread these spices out nice and evenly so this will cure overnight. Normally sausage for me is a three-day process. I'll let this cure overnight and grind tomorrow and then smoke another day. Make sure everything's spread out nice and evenly. Everything's sticking real good. Got any seasoning stuck to the sides or down here in the corners. Make sure that gets incorporated. Let's see what that's looking like. All the red peppers incorporated. All the mustard seed, black peppers incorporated. Spread out nice and even. Kind of pat it down in there a little bit. And now what we'll do is this will go in the fridge overnight and it will cure. This has got pink salt in it. It will cure overnight and then we'll grind it up tomorrow. Next time you guys see me, when we grind this up and case it, stay All tuned. Right guys, before I start grinding this up, I just want to show you what I'm using today. We're going to put this on right here. I've had it in the freezer overnight so it stays nice and cold when you're grinding because uh, if you don't keep this stuff cold while you're grinding, your fat will smear. And that's an important part to keeping your meat grinding. I'm going to start off with my sausage stuffing plate. This is going to be a double grind. Put that on there. Put this on somewhat tight. And our tray will go up here up top. Alright, I reset the camera angle to try to give y'all a good view so you can see how it's coming out and how I'm stuffing it. I'm out here doing this on a lifetime foldable table, so bear with me. This is what our uh, our meat's looking like after sitting up over a night curing. It's nice and firm, smells good. Only one thing left to do now is to grind this up. What you want to do before you start grinding is load as much meat into this tray as you can. That way you can keep everything moving. You want to grind this up as fast as you can. Go ahead and stuff your, your tube down in there. Get it going. And now, we're going to turn it on and start grinding. And this grind right here will go pretty fast with that kidney plate. 
using that kidney plate and then the coarse plate is the texture I like on my sausage. And you really don't want to force nothing through here. You want to just let the blade do its work and the machine do its work. You don't want to put it in a bind. If you're having to put it in a bind and your plate's not sharp and your blade's not sharp, you either sharpen them or change them out. folks so that's what that grind looks like right there it's really how you make chili meat so I'm gonna get the rest of this ground up and then I'll take you to the next step of my grinding stay tuned all right folks so we're done with that sausage stuffer grind the kidney plates what I call it and our next plate is gonna be the 10 millimeter or the 3 8 what I like to use when I double grind my sausage. Double grinding helps mix up your seasonings real good and helps everything uh, get cohesive. And you can see this is what our kidney plate grind looks like. Load this tray up to the max, stuff it as much as you can. And this process right here is a little bit slower than the kidney plate because hence it's going through smaller stuff so you will need your plunger on this grind. I'm going to try to do this as fast as possible. Keep things moving, keep things cold because this right here will cause friction and all the metal moving parts in there and if your fat's not cold it just smears your fat. When you're pressing down you don't want to put a lot of weight on it. Just press it down enough for it to catch. You don't want to force things through your, your grinder. You can damage your equipment. You can make your blades duller faster. Your plates duller faster. that's what that's looking like right there folks it's already got some tackiness to it sticking to my glove already which is a good thing which means that our cure set in and all of our binders that we put in here set in too sugar with the cure salt the water and everything that's in this mix will help it form a natural binder but we will put some milk powder in here to give you an even better bind than that so I'm gonna go ahead and finish grinding this up the next time you see me will be when we uh, stuff this sausage alright folks tuned. so I'm done with my double grind you can see it's already a little bit tacky but I'm gonna go ahead at this point right here and this is where we add, add in some binder, non-fat dry milk powder for a binder. I'm not going to use a whole lot. I really don't need too much. Sprinkle a little bit down on top right there. I will use this whole bag. This is where we add some water. This called for 10% uh, by weight. So we want to get in here, mix this up.
I will use both hands here in a minute. This is just to get the milk powder incorporated a little bit before I sprinkle more on there. And the reason I normally bare hand this, but I'm wearing a glove because I got myself yesterday when I was cubing up the pork butt. So, hands got numb, got carried away. It happens in sausage making. Got the rest of the milk powder in there. Incorporate the rest of the water. Got the sleeves rolled up. At this point, you just gotta get both your hands dirty. Knead it in there like so. And if you're wondering, that was 90 grams of milk powder, roughly. You just knead it like dough. I'll tell you right now, this has got a good bind on it already. It's sticking to my hands. This also helps incorporate your seasonings throughout. Glove came off. And if you know how you know you got a good bind on it, it sticks to your hands just like that. It's sticking to my hand, it's not falling off unless I do it real hard. I like that bind right there, and we'll give it just a little bit more mixing. <laughs> My hands are numb, folks. It comes with sausage making. So I've got this mixed up. Our binder's in. Our liquid's in. I'm going to throw it back in the fridge, get the stuffer set up, get the casing ready, and I'll bring you guys right back. Stay tuned. All right, folks. So I'm back to show you how to do my casings for this uh, Texas hot gut sausage. So I've took these casings out right here. And I've had them soaking. You need to let your casing soak for about 10, 15 minutes. That way it draws all the salt out into the water. And then you want some fresh water, which we got right here. And what you want to do, find the end of your casing. You want to get your fingers down in there, just like that. And come right here to the water. And get a bunch of it on the inside. So you can wash that casing out on the inside. Just like that. Now when I pick that up, see how much water's in there? And then what you want to do is just pick it up just like this and let that water run through the casing. Put it on this side right here. That way you dump the salty water back in there and you keep your fresh water. And if you lose all that water right there out of your casing, then it had a hole in it. And a lot of salt just came out of that. And what I typically like to do is I like to do this twice. I'll run water through all these casings, change this water out over here, and then swap it. So that's how you wash your casings out. That's my recommendation on it. Let your casings soak when you take them out of the, uh, the package for about 10, 15 minutes. Get you uh, a bowl of fresh water, run that fresh water through them, then dump this water out, put fresh water in this, and run it back through there one more time. And that'll prevent your casings from over salting your meat. If you just take it out of the package and then do that, you're going to have salty sausage. It's not going to be pleasant. And as far as casing goes, I recommend going to your local butcher 
and buying your casings by the hank. I bought the cheap ones off of Amazon. I don't really like none of them off of Amazon. They smell like a, a chemical. The ones over at your butcher are, are, are a little bit better than that. They're stronger. And uh, a notable brand is Deep Sea Casings. It's actually what these are right here, AA Casings. And uh, like I said, your butchers always got the best stuff for you. If you got to get it off of Amazon, it's doable. A lot of people on YouTube recommend uh, D-Wine, hog casings and all that in small packages. But man, that shit's junk, dude. You'll get two two foot pieces and all that. Some of these right here are six foot uh, six foot long, so you can get a lot of stuffing done without having to change out your casing. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish rinsing these out. Then next time you guys see me, when we get the saucer stuffer set up and we start casing. All right, Stay guys. Tuned. So I just got through stuffing some other sausage. So I've already got my casing on the horn. If you want to see how I do that whole process, I'll put the link up here to my other sausage video where it's a little more in-depth on that. This is what our mixture's looking like after sitting up in the fridge for a few hours. It's nice and tacky. I like wearing a cotton glove because it doesn't stick to the cotton glove. So I'm going to get this thing loaded up. Pro tip, when you load up your uh, stuffer, leave no air pocket. The test patty that I fried out of that is going to be the best beef sausage I've made to date. And you guys get to have the recipe. I'll put it down there in the description. We've got this dude loaded up. What we'll do is we'll crank down on it. I got a little bit of meat hanging out right there. That's what you want. Pull you some of that out. Get all the air out of it and tie your knot. Tie your knot. Snip the tip. Let's play with our meatballs, folks. What I like to do is just let it come off of there naturally. You don't overstuff it. You don't understuff it, but you get a good case on it. Just like that. If it feels like it's getting a little loose, you just hold it like that and then let it start sliding off again. So I've showed y'all how to do that, and now I'm going to go back to how I like to hold it. I like to hold it like this. I have more control over it like that. Get it cased up tighter or looser, however I want it. And every now and then, I like to stop and get this thing rolling. You can see right here where I started out, I was getting a feel for it. And if you see the different color in this right here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that was the leftover pork sausage I had in the casing right here. I don't like to waste nothing, so to up to about right there, that's all pork sausage. And then the rest of this is our hot guts. You can tell the difference in the color of them. And we'll carry on with the casing. You want to make sure you got your pan wet where everything's nice and slick. You can roll everything up easy. You want to make sure your casings are wet, your horns wet, and what also helps with the stuffing is if you take you a little bit of spray oil down there and spray it on the gasket of the stuffer, it'll slide down a lot easier. It helps when you got somebody else working the crank, but I'm a uh, I'm a loner when it comes to this kind of stuff. Nobody wants to do it with me. Kids are not interested in this stuff yet. 
roll it up just like that. We got a nice tight casing on that so far. I don't see no visible air pockets. But now it's time to stuff it back up again. All right. So we got that loaded back up. Let's finish filling up the casing that we got on the horn. And then I'll show you guys my linking process. You want to leave you about yay much on that horn right there? That way uh, when you pull it off, you got enough to tie it with. Make sure you pull that real tight because sometimes those suckers come undone. Snip the tip and we'll come right here and you just pinch the end right there get all the meat out of it and then twist. Pretty simple. Twist it a few times, put it down, come back right here, find you where you want to put it at and twist the opposite way. Just like that and so on and so forth try to make the links as consistent as you can nobody's perfect not even me Just keep on linking them up and rolling them up, folks. Nothing to it but to do it. Some people let this intimidate them, making sausage. But I've come to find it's very easy. Once you get the hang of it, it just comes natural after that. Yeah, kind of made that one a little too big. It's different strokes for different folks. And right about there where my hot link sausage ends and the pork starts back so I want to make sure I separate those two that way I don't have too bad of an oddball and just like that folks we're linked up it ain't hard to do. It's a Texas style hot gut sausage coming up. At this point, I'm going to get all these stuffed and linked up, and they'll dry in the fridge overnight, and they'll go into my 250 gallon offset smoker for a cold smoke bath. And I'll bring y'all through that entire process. The next time you guys see me, it will be tomorrow morning when we put these links on the 250 gallon offset pit. Stay, all right, guys. Here. So. Our beef hot link sausage is set up in the refrigerator overnight. The casing is dried out on them. Ain't nothing left now but to cold smoke it. And this sausage filled my smoker halfway up. When you're putting these sausages on there, make sure they all got a little space between. Probably right after the two hour mark, three hour mark, we'll come in here and we'll snip them apart into single links. They'll be dried out enough where they won't unravel on you. But I'll give you a little bit closer look at them. And you see what that's looking like. Those are looking good. They got some good color to them already. Yeah, that's a screwed up tie job I did on that one. Forgive me. But anyway, 
Our next step is to go ahead and get us a fire started. I'll go ahead and shut this down. Stay right, tuned. folks, for this cold smoke today, we're just going to go with a full chimney and lump charcoal. And two dense logs, green or logs, because you want that dirty smoke on your sausage. Since it's cold outside, I got to run two of them. And we'll put them on there just like that. Nothing to it but to do it, folks. I'll bring y'all in to manage this fire here in about two to three hours. We'll check those sausages for color. And we'll snip the tips and make them into individual lengths. I'll keep you guys uh, posted. And we'll go through this process. Next time y'all see me will be when we check these sausages out. Stay All right, guys, tuned. we'll bring you in for a quick temperature update before this rain sets in. And we're sitting exactly on 150. That's where I like my sausage at. I don't, I'll go a little bit higher if need be, but I'll rock this at 150 however long it takes for that to, internal temp of that sausage to hit 150. And our internal temps are 87 and 85. The 87 is the one closest to the firebox. The 85 is the one closest to the collector. So when this rain lets up, here in about two hours, we'll go in there and we'll start snipping the tips of the sausage. We're roughly a little over an hour in. All right, guys. So we're at a three-hour mark. I need to manage this fire. It's been smoldering. The rain has let up just a little bit. So we'll open this up, see what we got. Looks like my log rolled on me a little bit. What I've been doing... Just taking a chunk of red oak just like this, shoving it down in there. Just like that, and letting it burn real smoky. I want a real smoky, dirty fire when I'm smoking my sausage. Right now, our internal temps are sitting at about 104 closest to the smoke collector and 105 closest to the uh, firebox. So sausage are cooking them down even. It's the way we want them to do. I'm going to close this back down. We've been maintaining a very consistent temp for the last two hours of 150, 160. Hadn't got no higher than 160. Uh, it takes this big pit a while to heat up cold and it's raining like it is right now. That's taken off. I'm going to close this firebox down to about an inch and let it do its thing. Next time you guys see these sausages, we'll be here in a little bit. When this rain lets up, we'll snip the tips and we'll flip them over. All right, folks, just want to bring in a temperature update. I just managed a fire about 30 minutes ago. It is uh, dialed in. It's not moving at all. And we are running that nice, dirty smoke. That is the kind of smoke you want on your sausage the whole entire time you cannot over smoke that sausage i just want to bring y'all in for that i will bring y'all back here in about 30 45 minutes and we'll see what we're looking like stay right, folks so we're four and a half hours in let's see what we got so you see how good them sausages are looking they are looking nice what we're gonna do next let's get in here and snip the tips it's got that nice deep red color that's what you want on your sausage the underside's dirty but don't worry folks that right there will come right off all you do with that is you just take your paper towel and wipe it right on off at that point we're going to flip it so this side can see some color so i'm going to go ahead and snip all these up and the next time you guys see this sausage will be in about two hours we'll give it a nice bath when it hits an internal temp of 150 Right now, our sausage that's sitting by the firebox that's closest to the firebox is 123. Our sausage that's closer to the smoke collector is 114. So, these will be finishing up at different times. That kind of thing happens when you're using an offset smoker. So, I'm going to go ahead and get all these snipped up, get them flipped over and rearranged on the pit. I'll bring you guys back here in, after a while when this hits an internal temp of 150 and we shock it nice back. 
right, state. Folks, I got the manager's fire. I'm gonna make this quick. Is this raining? I've got a one gallon Ziploc bag over the camera to keep it dry. You can see everything is burnt down. Just about gone, except for this little chunk right here. I'm gonna put him right there in the middle. I'm gonna move everything up a little bit. Put that off to the side. And I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go with two more logs. Real barky logs. Barky logs are good for sausage. One right there. Then I'm gonna put one more barky dense log right there this right here should get me through the end of the cook we are at the five hour mark the internal temp on our sausage on both of them is 125 so they're cooking real even when you go to snip them apart and you have the pit open for a long time cleaning them off the internal temp will drop on them it takes a minute for them to get back up get them situated so I anticipate this taking about two more hours to get done so the next time you guys see me is when we get these sausages pulled off the pit and get them shocked in the ice bath all right Stay guys tuned. so we've reached an internal temp of 152 by the sausage by the firebox and 150 by the one that's at the smoke collector so you know you got a good running pit that runs pretty even and that's what that's looking like right there them sausages look nice so into the ice bath they go. So what you want to do, typically let these sit in here for about 10 about 10 minutes, 5 minutes, let them get shocked, and you just want to pull them out and clean them off. And they'll look like that right there. I'll do one more. Said you just want to pull them out where they were at on the grates. Wipe them real clean. Nobody likes a dirty wiener or sausage. And then they'll look just like that nice and plump all right guys so i'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these sausages taken care of and then we'll throw a few of these back on the pit and cook them off we'll slice them up and we'll eat some all right stay folks. tuned so here's the finished product on our texas hot link nice deep red color couldn't ask for better so i'm going to take this one right here and I want to cut it completely in half. Just like that. And I want y'all to look at the inside of this sausage. And how it's constructed. How juicy that is. That is juicy. Now let's give it a taste. Alright. So I'm going to cut me off a little piece of this hot link just for the initial taste test and you can see a lot of juice in there. Let's see what we got. It's very good. Got some heat, got some good flavors in it. All in all, that's a success. So let's go ahead and take a bite for a snap test. Mm -hmm. We got good snappy casing, which is always a plus for sausage. If your case is not snappy, you ain't doing it right. It is looking juicy. I hope y'all can see that real good on camera. We got messed up lighting right now raining picked a very good day to 
smoked sausage. Mm. All in all, that's a success. You just get a unique flavor when you mix pork and beef together, man. You can't can't beat it. There ain't nothing wrong with that. It is awesome. Just look at the way that that sausage is constructed. That doesn't look good. Nice and juicy. Goodness. I will put the recipe in the description below. A little recap here. This is a seven hour smoke. We went from uh, 175 to 150 on the heat and I just took my tub with it since it was cured and let it carry on to it finished out. No rush. If you do get in a little bit of a hurry, you can bump it up to 200 and finish in about four or five hours. But I, I, I like dragging mine out because I like getting that good smoke flavor on the outside. So there you have it. Red Oak Smoke Texas Hot Gut Sausage. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And until next time. Peace.